Hi, I'm Mike Bernstein and I'd like to talk to you today about the way in which to optimize the MNOVA settings for QNMR applications. So I'll be looking particularly at the processing and analysis in a general sense and I'll show you what you can choose and how to implement things in the best possible way. So first thing to consider when looking at uh, QNMR um, in, is to decide for yourself what is fit for purpose. So do you need very, very high performance where your uncertainties or your errors might be less than half a percent? Can you do with a kind of a silver level of standard where your purity um, needs only to be around 2% or less? And this is the very common case. And finally, can you relax things and really just be absolutely fine with say 5% uncertainty? And it's not uncommon for this to be the case. So depending on where you sit on in these in in these groups here you can choose various options to to move along so I'm going to cover these very very quickly in the slides and then I'll show you them uh, live so uh, so this is really for your reference so we're going to talk about Fourier transform and uh, the number of data points that are required and zero filling um, then we're going to talk about the types of appetization functions and smoothing functions that are typically used in QNMR. Phase correction, you'll all know how to do manual phase correction, but I'll introduce you to what I find to be the best uh, automatic ones that are available to you. And baseline correction is extremely important, and uh, normally for Proton we use the first two of these, but I'll introduce you also to the Whitaker Smoother, which is appropriate to use in, in specific cases. Now, integration methods is, um, we have basically two classes of integration procedures. One of these is just integration itself. And secondly, within multiplet analysis, you can perform integration there as well. And there's no reason why you can't mix and mix these up together. And that is exactly what we do in the QNMR plugin. So within integration, there's manual and automatic, and within um, multiple analysis is the same and I'll show you how these all work and the reason if you're wondering why we even bother doing integration in, in multiple analysis is that the multiple analysis contains both the integral numbers and also the number of new clients so that makes it nice for determining the normalized integrals which you need for quantification. Okay integration itself uh, you've got a you're spoiled for choice here and uh, the first of these is the sum integration which is the common one you all know and love and will have used uh, all of your life I guess all of your professional life and um, just basically to say that this is there but for QNMR we really need to consider how we set these ranges automatically and so I'll talk about the ranges growth factor if you have spectra with horrible overlap or you have horrible signals that you don't want to integrate and it's messing up your sum integration then this global spectrum deconvolution, deconvolution GSD is the one to choose and it works on the peaks themselves so it's working in the frequency domain and it doesn't give you as good performance as sum integration in, in the best circumstances but where you do have overlap it gives you pretty good um, performance and in many cases it, it, it's absolutely fine to the bronze or silver levels. QGSD is a variant of GSD. It's uh, um, It's been optimized for quantification, hence the Q, and this is operating to a much higher level of um, performance and I'll show you how that works. And finally is we have the edited sum method which we developed in collaboration with the BKA and uh, I won't talk a lot about this but just to say that when you have the very very highest demands and you want to really really get things perfect then this is the one for you. So integration methods, uh, so this is integration, this is how you choose the various methods, uh, these have a dependency on, on the peak picking options and I'll go through these myself later in the video. Similarly, for multiple integration, we can choose various options over here, and um, and this is where the ranges growth factor is set. And again, I'll be showing you these in the software. And finally, I just want to say a little bit about the new clients per multiplet. So you see here for a multiplet, 
there's an integral value that goes with it, which is this absolute value here that you see in the multiplet manager. And together with that is also the number of new clients that correspond to that multiplet. So the number of H's is two in this case here. And this is where you would change things if you wanted to, um, if those weren't correct. Now, another way to get these numbers nice, the number of new clients uh, to be good and correct is to use the structure if you have it available and you use it to get by performing auto assignment so if we have a structure and the spectrum that goes with it then using auto assignments will give us far more robust number of nuclides per multiplet so I encourage you to do that last slide is, is, is a bunch of links to a whole bunch more information that you can get and, and I encourage you to use that. I'll make these slides available so you can click through and, and see all of those. Okay, so let's look at some data now and we're going to start off with appetization and I need the spectrum of caffeine for that and the spectrum of caffeine itself and it's got an internal reference compound over here at about 4 ppm and you can see there's some nasties on the side of this and we're going to address those when we come to baseline, sorry, apodization. Let's first talk about under processing. Let's first talk about zero filling. So this tells me that the original data were collected with 32k points and two levels of zero filling are what you really ought to be doing. So if I started at 32k, if I do one level of zero filling that gives me 64k, 128k gives you two levels of zero filling and that's what I'm going to do for these data because I want them to be as I want the peaks to be as well digitized as possible. As a rule of thumb if you have fewer than 64k data points on a spectrometer less than 600 or so then your peaks will be under digitized and there's a problem so when you're collecting data please collect at least 32 or 64k for proton. Okay, uh, so the next thing is appetization, which I alluded to, and here's the window for that. And we can see how these are working. So if I go to view and full view, you get a little window pop up and the FID is shown here. And in green, you see the, ap the appetization function. So for QNMR, you'll find that most people are using exponential multiplication, and that's great. Um, a value of around 0 0.2, 0 0.3 of a hertz is commonly used. You, you see actually that it isn't quite enough to remove all of the artifacts at the base of this peak. And so let's talk about a second capability. So if I click on this, then there's no exponential multiplication. There's no nothing being done to the spectrum. If I look on the advanced slide, uh, tab, you see that the, there's a capability called stunning and that applies a function that looks like this and you see that it, it forces the last data points to be zero and that has the nice effect of making sure that you don't have those horrible wiggles on the each side of, of a, a sharp peak like this and I'd be very happy to take this spectrum forward and, and do the further analysis of it. There are some functions that you really should not do if you want to do quantification. So let's just take it that uh, for today, let's say that either use exponential or use stunning, but keep away from the others. Okay, I'm going to keep to that. Next, we think about phasing. So if I look at the entire spectrum like that and I open up the processing and auto phase correction options, you'll see that there's seven of these. Uh, but I f ask you to focus only on the regions analysis and global. Those are the ones that I believe will give you the best performance for standard proton spectra. So I've already used regions analysis and that's pretty good. But I'm going to click on global just to show you how it can be slightly off and if I click on OK. So you see when I blow it up it's not as good as I'd like it to be and that would affect the sum integration of these peaks and to a small extent perhaps also the GSD although not as great.
So let's go back to what we know works. Also phase correction. I'm going to deselect that and I'm going to go to that one and I'm going to click on OK and that's applied and you see how nice that is now. So that's absolutely fine to be carried forward to the final stage of the processing which is baseline correction. And this is absolutely important to do. It's mandatory to do correctly. So let's start with a spectrum where I can show you what I'm up to. So we see the spectrum of Catechin and it's got some nasties on it, which I don't like and I want to get rid of. So let's look at the options. So baseline correction. And you can see what we're getting rid of. We have in, in actual fact, the, the data look like this. We've got this horrible bow to the spectrum and these smiles on the side. Not very nice. We need to remove those. And basically what we're trying to do when we select this is to get this blue line, which represents the, 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 the actual baseline correction function. We want that to basically feed through the noise of the spectrum as best we can. So what you'll find, I believe, for most spectra, proton spectra is that either the polynomial fit will work really well or the Bernstein polynomial fit will work really well. You can see here what happens when it doesn't work as well as you'd like it to. The blue line is now really coming above the spectrum and it's going to affect it nastily. So I really wouldn't recommend this one in this instance, but the polynomial fit is a good fit. Not absolutely perfect over here, but it is good overall. So I'm going to select that by clicking on OK, and that applies it, and I have the spectrum there. OK, so my spectrum's all processed. I've done my zero filling, my appetization, my automatic phasing, and my baseline correction. Just to remind you too that you have this processing template and all of those numbers are basically collected as you apply them into this template. And if this is something that you apply the same every time, what I suggest you do is to save this template and then with a simple re uh, application of the processing template, you can do all of that processing in one go. So that's really handy, it saves you a lot of time. Okay, let's talk about integration. So if you recall, there were four integration methods. We had first, this is anti-analysis. We have auto-integration. We have multiplets analysis, which will perform integration. And p-picking 2 is important because that's where GSD and QGSD settings are made. So what I have here is a spectrum of a compound. And this is a, a region over here where the peaks are overlapping with with a, a broad component, uh, which is not nice. And so this is affecting the normal sum integral of, of peaks where close by. So sum integration, what we need to do is to let me remove this analysis. And what I'm going to do now is to go to multiple analysis options. And I'm going to click, click on sum. That's good. OK, and if I click on the expert level, you can see now that I can set the range's growth factor. And this is the thing that's going to grow the integral region so that it covers a decent part of the each multiplet. So the guideline number here is something like 20, 15 to 20 for proton spectra. And um, I'm going to click on OK, and then I'm going to ask it to do the analysis. It has to do p-picking as well, and then it does all of it for me. And you'll see, as I say, that the number here for this particular multiplet is affected by this broad peak here. But if we look in this region over here, um, these numbers are absolutely fine. So this is coming from those, that final group. So that, that, those will be good numbers. And the width of this range has been increased by that multiplet growth factor. OK, I'm going to keep on focusing on this region here because this is where all the, the fun stuff happens. If I now move to the second method here, uh, here I've used peak integration or GSD integration. So what I need to do is I'm going to remove the analysis and I'm going to come to my 
auto multiplet analysis options again and you see here that I'm using peaks as my method. Now I'm using peaks, that's great, but I need to say a little bit more about how the peaks are being done. So I need to come to the peaks options as well. And here I've, I need to cho choose GSD as the method. And under advanced, I need to not choose QGSD. This is where I will choose it when I do select that. So for now, I'm going to leave this deselected. I'm going to use GSD. OK that. And I'm going to do multiplets analysis, and it's going to do it all for me. And now you see that the integration of this multiplet has changed quite considerably, and it's now in line with um, a methylene signal here, which is reasonable. The third option is uh, QGSD, and this works basically the same. So I have peaks selected for my multiplets and under the peaks I have QGSD selected and I would recommend a value here between 5 and 10 depending how fussy you want to be. So I'll put it in the middle and I'll click OK and this takes a little bit longer to perform because it's iterative and so I'm not going to do it live for you but take my word for the fact that if I were to clean the analysis and then do automatic multiple analysis, it would come up with this result. And equally, if I wanted to do just standard integration, then everything that I've said would apply equally well. But now you would come to this option here. And here I would pick peaks. OK, so here I have a whole bunch of new options. And because I've chosen peaks, again, it will use QGSD from here because I have it selected here. So either way you can select QGSD either through multiple analysis or through auto integration and this applies to everything so you have both for both. Now I spoke about edited sum here it is uh, as I said I'm not going to say an awful lot about it in this video but if you want to use it then all you have to do is um, for example, I'm going to clean the analysis now. As I say, you could use multiple analysis, but I'll show you auto integration in this case. So if I come here and I choose edited sum and OK, and if I want the peak analysis to be standard GSD as opposed to QGSD, I would select that. And now when I do auto integration, it's going to do that analysis for me, and that's absolutely fine and now I can make the changes that are possible with the edited sum. Okay, I'm basically at the end of the presentation. Uh, I did say that uh, there's this capability of doing auto-analysis, so when I have the structure and the spectrum, then I can do auto-assignment. So this button over here, you need the processing, you need the prediction capability to do this. It'll grind away and come up with um, the right numbers for these all the way along. So these, as you see, have been assigned to a particular atom on, on the molecule. OK, I'm at the end of this presentation. As I say, recapping, everything is hopefully described for you nicely, and you can find everything you need. I hope that the slides are useful to you in terms of knowing which options are important to get right and how to set them, most importantly. And as you use more and more QSGSD, I encourage you to go through some of this uh, large amount of material that we've prepared and others have helped us with. And you'll find these useful as you move along. So I thank you for your time and I wish you every luck. Bye now.